Duality is something that we all inherently have. If you were to take the present version of yourself and the past version of yourself many years ago, you would probably say that it's two very different versions of yourself. Even when I think upon my own life, if I compare my younger self to the current version of me talking to you now, there are similarities but also differences creating a duality. The past version of myself was affected and conditions with the thoughts and hopes of the future and the present version of myself is someone who was creative with the choices from my past. Meaning no matter who you are, no matter your upbringing, your religion, your ethnicity, there is a duality within everyone, including you. Today though, I'm going to be talking about powder and jinx. The same person, but different personalities. And of course, this video will contain spoilers for season one of Arcane, so proceed with caution. I can't talk about Jinx without talking about her past first, that being Powder, the version of Jinx who was innocent, cheerful and so full of life. When we're first introduced to Powder, we see this beautiful sisterhood she has with her sister Vi. Despite all Vi has seen and lost, Powder is what gives Vi purpose. Vi wishes to provide for Powder and so gives her reasoning to live and fight for a better future. As we know, Powder and Vi are living at the lowest of society. They live in the Undercer, where poverty and death is all too common. And through living like this, they're both conditioned to become survivalists, learning how to steal from the city above in order to make money, but in doing so risking their own lives. Each one of Vi's group brings something to the table. Milo is an excellent lock picker, Clagger brings the muscle, and Vi brings the leadership. But as for Powder, at this age, she only proves to slow them down and becomes what Milo describes as a jinx, the first telling of Powder's future. Every time she comes, something goes wrong. She jinxes every job. We do see Powder trying to help with her homemade monkey bombs, however. The first couple times we see her use them, they don't end up working and they're practically useless to the group. And I think Powder's homemade monkey bombs actually have a symbolism connecting to Powder. They never seem to work under pressure, just how Powder seems to become a jinx under pressure. First with blowing up Jace's apartment, and then when she throws all the stolen loot from Jace's apartment into the riverbank. Powder in later episodes becomes pretty upset with how people view her. She wants to prove so much to everyone she cares for, just like Vi does. Vi is her biggest role model and is someone who she looks up to, and is someone who always seems to be able to help the group out, and Powder wants that feeling. She wants to have people depend on her and look to her for help. She doesn't want to feel like she's the damsel in distress, like she's the one who needs saving. She wants to be the one who saves others. And people like Milo continue to remind her that she's nothing but a jinx, that she messes up every mission they go on and she can't handle any sort of conflict. Meanwhile, Vi is seen as a leader and can do no wrong in the group's view. Vanda even says that if Vi told the group to fight, they would. She has this spirit about her that inspires others to do whatever she says. And Powder is jealous of this. I mean, she never says it out loud, but you can tell just how much she wants to be like Vi. In fact, anyone who has an older sibling will know this feeling. If your older sibling learns how to ride a bike, then you want to learn how to ride a bike. If your older sibling is really good at a certain sport, then you want to become better than them at that sport. It's that inherent competition and your older sibling being your role model when you're younger that lives in all of us. Of course, if you don't have an older sibling, then this feeling may be unheard of to you. The dynamic between Vi and Powder, however, is sincere. They have a great bonding moment after Powder throws the loot into the riverbank, where Vi comforts Powder and lets her know that they all make mistakes. And even Vi herself has had moments of weakness. She tells Powder stories from every member in the group and days where they've made mistakes. Vi reassures Powder in this moment and lets her know that even though right now she may feel useless and a jinx, that one day she will show everyone her potential, that they both will show the world what they're capable of and earn the city's respect. And this is a brief moment in the show where it's genuinely touching and optimistic. Despite Powder making mistakes, Vi still wants her sister to be by her side and still fully believes in her. After what the sisters did at Jace's apartment, Vanda would tell them to go into hiding, keep themselves under the radar as enforcers would come looking for them. This is where we see Vi's personality really rub off on Powder as Vi wants to fight back and because Vi has this ideology of fighting back and creating conflict, so does Powder, even trying to hone her own accuracy and create more bombs in hopes that they would work. They were truly ready to risk their own lives and go to war with the enforcers and because of this, I think it's what sows the seeds of violence within Powder which would eventually eventually affect her in the future when she becomes Jinx. Soon enough, of course, Silco would come out of the shadows and would take Vanda. This is where the chain effect starts. When Vi realizes Vanda has been taken, she gathers up her group and wants to go and save Vanda, but tells Powder to stay behind, because although she knows Powder wants to help, she doesn't want her to get her or anyone else through her actions. Powder would end up having a breakdown because of this. She wants to help, but no, she can't, and it's so frustrating to her to the point where she has a breakdown knowing she can't do anything to help them out. This, to me, is where we start to see a little 
little bit of Jinx's personality shine through with chaotic behavior and violent tendencies as we see Powder destroying her own personal belongings and throwing items around the room. Afterwards, Powder would come across the stolen Hextech gemstones that she had taken from Jace's apartment and she would see it as a way to help. Of course, this wouldn't help. It would only end up getting Milo and Clagger killed through Powder's explosive bombs. This is where we get the infamous scene of Vi leaving Powder and this scene is so powerful. I mean, just the score alone tells us every emotion without it having to be said. The betrayal Vi feels from her own sister, the guilt Powder must feel knowing she only wanted to help and this is where Jinx would be born. I mean, I think parts of Jinx was always in Powder with the disregard for what destruction the Hextech gemstones could cause, the selfish nature of wanting to help and causing those she cared for to be killed and the violent behavior Powder portrayed earlier in the breakdown scene. But I don't think that's Powder's fault. In fact, I would blame Vi for planting those personality traits in Powder. I can't say it enough. Powder wants to not only provide as much value as Vi does, but wants to be able to impress Vi. It's this toxic cycle of her wanting to help and impress Vi that causes so many things to go wrong and why I think Powder would create something as deadly as a monkey bomb. This is why I think Powder tries to make her monkey bombs work. She wants to not only prove to the rest of the group that they would work, but also to herself. So she doesn't feel guilty for being a jinx in the past, but in doing this would only prove to actually become a jinx on Vi's life. Hi. Years later, we're finally introduced to Powder. At least it looks like Powder, but we soon find out it's actually Jinx. And she's wildly different to how Powder was. That once innocent and cheerful child has been replaced with a chaotic and violent person. And Jinx in this first sequence that we see her in is genuinely terrifying when compared to Powder. She takes lives so easily. Those first three episodes that we saw of Powder, we saw that she had struggles with getting her monkey bombs to work. But when we're introduced to Jinx, we see her use using handcrafted grenades that not only work but have devastating and colourful effects. Even though Jinx is taking lives, she sees it as a colourful art and we as the viewer see it through her filter. I mean, in this sequence alone when Jinx is taking lives, you don't see really any blood. Instead, it's replaced with these colourful clouds of dust from her grenades. Compare this to any fight that Vi is in where we see blood and saliva and it's completely different filters of the world. I believe this is because Powder still lives in Jinx and and despite acting like an entirely new person, she still has that childish nature and filter on the world. I also love how they betray anytime Jinx is having a moment of insanity. We see that the animators have put these harsh scribbles and lines to show that Jinx's mind is unstable. It's a fantastic way to show that the character is dealing with trauma. Jinx also fights one of the firelights that looks a lot like her sister, and this sends Jinx down a spiral of emotions. She clearly still carries the baggage and guilt from everything that happened the night Vanda was taken and the night powder killed those she cared for. When she remembered all of those memories, they flooded in so quickly she didn't have time to think and this caused her to go absolutely berserk and fire her gun, exploding with her chaotic nature. Later on, we see Silco lecturing Jinx about how her outburst caused weeks of progress to go down the drain and although Jinx tries to shrug it off and acts like it doesn't bother her, it actually does because she once again feels like she's letting people down. Even as Jinx, she still gets upset when people see her making mistakes because she doesn't want to seem useless, which is the exact toxic cycle she went through as Powder. Even years later, nothing has changed. She still has outbursts when people don't want her help. Because of Jinx wanting to prove that she's useful to Silco, she attacks the upper city and gets her hands on a stabilized version of the Hextech crystals. Even though Silco at first is furious with Jinx for killing a dozen enforcers, he quickly comes round when he sees what she had stolen. With a stabilized Hextech crystal, they would be able to make incredibly powerful weapons. However, when Jinx tries to understand the Hextech crystals, she accidentally causes a small explosion which reminds her of what she did the night her friends died. And again, it sends her down a spiral of emotions. It's clear she's still guilty for what she did and carries that with her. And whenever anything reminds her of it, she becomes unstable and loses it. It's because of this guilt and baggage that she decides to revisit the old place they all laid low when they were younger. We see as she's walking through, she's hit with memories, eventually finding herself at the boxing room rig Vi would practice on. Jinx would take her chance to test her own combat experience and we see her fighting style is chaotic compared to Vi whose fighting is focused. She would get second place behind Vi's top score and she would once again lose it because she's being constantly reminded that she can't live up to Vi, something that still bothers her to this day. Eventually, Caitlyn would break Vi out of prison and Vi would go looking for Powder, aka Jinx. Silco would get wind of this and would try and go after Vi and kill her as to not interfere with Jinx.
Jinx. This is where we get an amazing scene where Jinx recalls the memory of Vi telling her that no matter where she is, when she lights up the flare that Vi gave her, she would find her and so Jinx would take her chance and light the flare. And again, what another amazing scene this was. For three episodes, we was waiting to see Powder and Vi be reunited. And when I was first watching, I thought now that Vi has found Powder, her mission is basically complete. But we see that a little bit of insecurity from Jinx come to play and her jealousy of Caitlyn would get the best of her. For a moment, we saw Powder within Jinx. Despite Jinx telling Vi that Powder is no longer within her, I think that she is in fact still there. She's just scared to make peace with her past and go with Vi in this moment. I mean, the firelights would interrupt the touching moment anyway, but it's prevalent that Powder is still within Jinx. Powder's just buried deep down inside of Jinx. The problem now is that Vi has been taken again from Powder. So now the Jinx part of her is left to overthink and she grows more hatred for Caitlyn, believing that Caitlyn is only going to take her spot and Vi away from her. She would eventually catch up to them when they were trying to cross the border between the Undercity and Piltover, but would only grow more jealousy as she sees Caitlyn and Vi hug. They were going to go their separate ways, but then a gunshot from an enforcer would bring Vi running back to them and this would absolutely anger Jinx. She would set bombs off all over the bridge trying to kill all the enforcers and possibly Caitlyn and when Jinx does emerge from the shadows, we hear her humming as the dust settles and a cool detail is she's actually humming the lullaby at the beginning of episode 1, which I thought was just a neat detail. She would soon find Vi and Caitlyn and would attempt to kill Caitlyn before being interrupted by Echo the boy saviour. The intensity grows as Jinx and Echo, who were once friends, prepare to kill each other. And just before they do, they both smile and let out a bit of cheerfulness reflecting on the old days when they grew up together. And this whole story is just incredible. Echo would get the upper hand on Jinx and would go in for the kill when the unexpected happens. See, for the entire episode, Echo had been pressing Vi about Jinx, no longer being Powder. But in this moment, this brief moment, Echo as well as the viewer sees Powder. Her eyes show that she's in so much pain and with that embrace from Jinx, we see her set off an explosive except in death. Jinx in this moment was technically about to die, but when I speak about the death of Powder, I don't mean physically but mentally. At least what remained of Powder within Jinx. The Powder that remained within Jinx was what kept fear and reasoning in Jinx. And now that Powder is officially dead, Jinx has lost that duality she had. She is no longer concerned with her past. She has accepted what had happened and has chosen to become Jinx through and through. Silco's last words to Jinx is that she's perfect just the way she is. Don't cry. You're perfect. And even though Silco is a villain, he's one that genuinely cared about Jinx. He would have burnt the world for her because she's the only one who had been betrayed by family just like Silco had. And Jinx felt like a daughter to Silco. It's these final words that had officially killed Powder and the duality within Jinx. She's now chosen to be Jinx. And when we get the final shot of Jinx firing the rocket towards Piltover, we see her whole emotion put into it. The rocket not only contains explosive power, but a message for everything Jinx has endured. Everything she's been through, her relationship, her childhood, her grief, it's all packaged into this one explosion. Once again, symbolizing how Jinx expresses herself through her explosives. The final shot as well has the song, What Could Have Been, and what a perfect song to put at the end. The lyrics explaining it all, what could have been, if Vanda never died, if Silco never found Powder, if Powder never went to the factory that night, if Vi never abandoned Powder to begin with. It's these what ifs that really get you thinking about the difference their futures would have been if they had chosen other options. It's the line, what could have been, which perfectly shows the regret that every character has for their choices. To sum everything up, duality is a powerful thing, and it's when you forget your past that you lose your way. If you forget where you came from, you won't have a clear path ahead. Just like Jinx is now broken because she no longer has any remnants of powder left within her. She knows who she is, sure, but she's just miserable now. She has lost her way and chosen to isolate herself for good. The only person, in fact, who understood her is now gone, and because there's no one left to understand how she feels, she's just a shell of that innocent child she once was. Again, I think it all comes back to Vi. 
Jinx literally says that Silco didn't create Jinx. Vi did. And I wholeheartedly agree. Even though Vi was trying to look out for Powder and her future, she only ended up dooming her with her own ideals. Vi chose to have Powder come on dangerous missions. Vi chose to show Powder violence. Vi chose to leave Powder behind. Vi was the reason Jinx was born to begin with. She planted the seeds for Jinx to eventually be born. And even though she wasn't the reason Powder died, she contributed to that ending. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Jinx is a really fascinating character to me and one that I think the story has to be careful with as she has so much depth to her story. They've also released a season two teaser for Arcane and I like most ambitious fans can't wait to see what's in store for the future of these characters. But that's all I have time for today internet stranger. Please consider watching this video next. I think that you may end up really liking it and if I don't see you again then have a great day or night.